we're going to look at what are called price ceilings and price floors. How does a restriction on price, price controls, affect a market? A price ceiling is an upper limit above which price cannot rise by regulation or by law. So here is our market model, demand curve, supply curve, equilibrium price. A price ceiling prevents the price from rising to what would be the equilibrium. It's an upper limit. So price can rise up to that level, but not above it. Since a binding price ceiling has to be below where the price would otherwise have gone, the equilibrium price, then a binding price, price ceiling means that quantity supplied is going to be less than quantity demanded. And the market will be characterized by excess demand. Now, since what is not supplied cannot be bought, then the lesser side of the market will prevail. The amount traded has to be the lesser of the quantity being supplied and being demanded. So the quantity tra traded in the market shrinks. Price ceilings look like, uh, take many guises, but one of the guises is laws against what is called price gouging. And this happened in, in some countries in, in response to the global pandemic, where prices for sanitizers jumped up appreciably in the early weeks of the pandemic. State Minister in the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries announced in Parliament that the trade sales of goods during period of declaration order will be coming into effect to curb price gouging to prevent prices from rising. He said that the disaster risk management order would prohibit price increases higher than the charge that existed before the order came into force. So market conditions changed, demand increased, and suppliers were yet to respond to the same degree. So the market price would have risen, but Many countries implemented a price control, implemented a price ceiling to stop prices from rising. So that's what a price ceiling can look like. What are the consequences of imposing a, a price ceiling? Well, if there is inadequate enforcement, then you end up with simply a, a black market. You end up with an illegal market where the trades take place anyway, but outside of the gaze of the authorities. The market tries to reassert itself. Market forces, we know, are like forces of nature. People are going to respond to incentives, to change in prices, and prices are going to respond to people's decisions. It's automatic. So it makes sense that one of the responses to the regulation is for it to be ignored to the extent that it can be ignored. If the enforcement is strong, then the market reasserts itself in other ways. by bundling. Bundling means that the product 
on which the price ceiling applies, the, the forced low price applies, is bundled with, is married to a second product which the seller sells above what would be its normal price. You can buy my sanitizer at the low price, but you also have to buy laundry detergent at above the normal price. And that way, the bundle ends up being sold for what would have been the market price of, of, of the two of them together. Another thing that happens in a market in which there are price controls, in which there's a price ceiling, is that producers reduce the quality to match the low price. And so in that way, the quality adjusted price ends up being the market price. A popular target of price ceilings is the exchange rate. The exchange rate is just the price. It's the price of a US dollar. And some countries have, have exchange controls and try to fix the exchange rate legally and prevent you from buying US dollars at above what is the legally allowed price? Well, the result of that is always a black market in foreign exchange. And there are many examples of it around the world in recent decades. Corresponding to a price ceiling, but in the opposite direction, is a price floor. A lower limit below which price cannot fall. So for a price floor to be binding, it has to be above the equilibrium price and therefore prevent the price from falling below that floor. If there's a binding price floor, then the quantity demanded will be less than the quantity supplied and the market is characterized by excess supply. The shorter side of the market will prevail, and so the quantity traded shrinks. For both the price ceiling and the price floor, the market shrinks. And if the market shrinks and is trading a lesser quantity than would have obtained, in the absence of the price floor, the price ceiling, then we have deadweight losses. Then we have a loss of welfare because potentially welfare creating trades do not take place. Again, just as in the case of the price ceiling, the market tries to reassert itself. So we end up with an illegal or black market in the product buyers and sellers meet outside of the gates of the authorities to trade at the lower price that the market demands. In the presence of a, of a price floor, another way the market tries to assert itself is with the opposite of bundling. It's with giveaways that if you buy this product, at the artificially high price, that is the price floor, then you get some additional giveaway for free. Again, so that the combination ends up being close to what, what, what would have been the market price for the bundle. And instead of, increase, instead of decreases in quality, we have increases in quality. That suppliers compete on quality instead of on price. Recently, Scotland introduced a price floor for alcohol. The government of Scotland set a minimum price 
for alcohol of 50 pence per unit. The magazine reasons that the policy is likely to sober up some of the heaviest drinkers. And surprisingly, it may also give some drinks firms and retailers reason to celebrate. The policy may mean higher profits for some of them. So price floors exist, and this is an example of it. Let us be explicit here and demonstrate the loss of welfare with, with a price restriction, a price ceiling or a price floor. There is the amount of consumer surplus and the amount of producer surplus created in this market in the absence of any price control. Taken together, they represent the total welfare created in this market. An effective price floor raises the price in the market, reduces the quantity traded, and so consumer surplus falls, both because there's a smaller quantity, consumers get to buy less, and, and they pay a higher price. Producers have a mixed outcome. Some producers are out of the market. Some quantities that would have gotten sold in the absence of the price control now remain unsold. And so the market shrinks. But those producers who remain in the market are getting a higher price. So it's a mixed bag for producers. Some are worse off, they're out of the market. Some are better off because they remain in the market and get a higher price. And for those producers, the producer surplus is greater. This is what the article was talking about when it said some Scottish drink suppliers will have reason to celebrate. To analyze the welfare effect of a price ceiling, we drop the price to below the equilibrium and we see that a chunk of what would have been producer surplus becomes consumer surplus. So producers are unambiguously worse off, some consumers are better off. But the problem with both the price floor and the price ceiling is that in each case, the welfare in the market shrinks by that amount. There is a deadweight loss. Price controls create deadweight losses in, in markets. A popular price floor is the minimum wage. Most countries have some kind of minimum wage. We know that price floors create excess supply. And the name for excess supply in the case of a price floor in the labor market is unemployment. More people wanting work then there is demand for their services. And if there's a real increase in the minimum wage, the excess supply or unemployment will grow. Under, under perfect circumstances, we should add that the empirical evidence to support minimum wage increases creating significant unemployment is is at best ambiguous we should point out as well that 
one of the major concerns about price controls of any type, whether ceilings or floors, is that it interferes with the role of prices in signaling to consumers and producers how best to allocate scarce resources. We know that price signals are key to the functioning of a market economy. Changing price reflects that some products are becoming relatively more scarce or more abundant. And a rising price signals to consumers to shift away from those products, to economize on the use of those products, and signals to producers to produce more of them. This is how a market economy efficiently uses its scarce resources. Price controls interfere with the price signaling mechanism in an economy and therefore interferes with the efficient use of scarce resources. Your takeaway is that price controls contract the market and create deadweight losses.